Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over some of the physics of the Ferris wheel. We're going to use Newton's second law, and we're also going to talk about uniform circular motion and the normal force. Okay, here's our diagram of the Ferris wheel, and the goal of this video is to determine what is the normal force acting on the person in these three locations. Here, the person is standing still, so the normal force is exerted by the floor or the surface here on the person. Here the person is going round and round on the Ferris wheel and we want to know what is the normal force exerted by the seat on the person for each of these two locations. Okay, so that's the goal, three normal forces. All right, first of all, let's talk about uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion means that you're going around a circle with uniform motion and that means that your speed is constant. So you're going around a circle with a constant speed, but because you're going around a circle, you're, the direction that you're going is constantly changing. And if your direction is constantly changing, then your velocity is constantly changing. And if your velocity is constantly changing, then you are accelerating. That's right. Acceleration is change in velocity. All right. So for example, if you're sitting right here, your velocity vector points in this direction. If you're over here, it points in that direction and so on and so on. So you can see when you go round and round, your velocity is constantly changing. Well, like we said, if your velocity is constantly changing, then you're accelerating. And for uniform circular motion, we call that acceleration centripetal acceleration, center seeking acceleration, because the acceleration vector points towards the center. It's just uh, acceleration, but it's called centripetal because it's going around a circle and the, and the acceleration vector points towards the center at each location like that. Okay, that's uniform circular motion, constant speed, constantly changing velocity. Constantly changing velocity means you are accelerating. All right, so let's go through and see if we can calculate the normal force for these locations. All right, now you know we're going to use, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to use Newton's second law. And Newton's second law says that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Okay, now, for uniform circular motion, for the cases when you're going around a circle, you can calculate the acceleration using this equation, v squared over r, the velocity squared times r. Oftentimes in a problem, it'll say you have a Ferris wheel that's going around and around a circle with this velocity and has this radius, what's the normal force? You have to calculate something, okay? In this case, to keep the calculation simple, I'm just going to leave A as A. I'm not going to substitute in the V squared over R. But when you do the calculations, which I'll do in a second video, then we're going to use that equation to figure out what the actual acceleration is. Okay? So let's go on and see if we can calculate the normal force for these three locations. All right, first of all, we're going to use, we're going to do this person standing right here. The person is standing still. They're not moving. They have a gravitational force. The force of gravity is downwards, and you use mg, the mass times acceleration of gravity, to calculate that. So we designate that mg, and then we want to figure out what the normal force is. The normal force pushes up because the person is not falling through the floor, and therefore we're going to designate that as uh, fn. And then it's not too important in this case, but just to be consistent, we're going to designate a direction for the positive direction. And in this case, we're going to say that up is the positive direction. All right, now we're going to use Newton's second law to sum up the forces. Newton's second law, as we put on here, is F equals MA. The sum of the forces equals the mass times the acceleration. FN points in the positive direction, so it's easiest to write that one down first. MG points in the negative direction. So we write minus MG, and we might write down here MA, but the acceleration is zero. We're standing still. Well, the acceleration is zero, then zero times M is zero, and therefore this is equal to zero. The sum of the forces is equal to zero, which means that the normal force is therefore going to be equal to mg. If you're stationary, if you're not moving, then the sum of the forces is equal to zero, and therefore there's only two forces, so these are equal and opposite. Your weight pushes down, and the ground pushes back up on you with um, the normal force that is equal to your weight. All right, so here we have, we would call, what we would call this our true weight, because we're not moving and this will be different. Uh, I'm going to call that the true weight. All right, now let's see if we can do the same thing for the top and the bottom. Let's do the top first, and we're going to draw the forces first. Once again, we have the force of gravity. The force of gravity pulls down. You have gravity. You're near Earth. We call that mg. Well, you're not falling through the floor, so excuse me, the seat there, so therefore there's a normal force, and we're going to call that fn again. All right, now we did say that you're accelerating because you're going around in a circle. 
even though you're standing, it looks like you're standing still in this picture, you are going around a circle. So you are accelerating, you're constantly moving around a circle. And we said that the acceleration is towards the center. So I'm going to draw the acceleration vector like this. It doesn't point towards the center, but if I was to put it over the person, it would point towards the center. And it points downwards, and we call that the acceleration. Now, the last thing we have to do, we have to designate the positive direction for this case. And the easiest thing to do, and the most common thing that is done, is you say that the direction of the acceleration is, oops, is the positive direction. So this is the positive direction. If you want to say up is positive, it's the same thing. You'll get the same answer as long as you're consistent with your signs. But this makes it a little bit neater, okay, as a neater and cleaner. Okay, so we're going to say top. We're going to work on the top one here first. So I'm going to put down here top. We're going to use Newton's second law to sum up the forces. So let's see, down is positive, so mg points down. So we'll put mg first, so we have a nice positive one in the front, keeps the negative signs in the center here, makes sure we don't lose our negative sign, and the fn points up, up is the negative direction, and that is going to be equal to ma. It's a positive a, so we put po positive acceleration, just put down ma, and therefore we know that fn, in this case, is going to be equal to mg, your weight, minus ma. Okay, I moved mg to the other side. I multiplied my negative 1 through, and I get fn equals mg minus ma. I'm just going to simplify this one next, one more step, just to kind of give us a better feel for it. So it's going to be our mass. It's going to be then for, I'm going to factor the m out, so I get g minus a. So the normal force, in the case when you're at the top, is going to be your mass times g, the acceleration due to gravity, minus the acceleration of the roller coaster. So you can see, if we calculate Fn, we're going to get a value that's less than our true weight. So if we had a scale, we brought it on the, on the Ferris wheel, and we sat on the scale, it would read less than our weight when we're here at the top of um, the Ferris wheel by a factor of minus A, okay? Now let's try the same thing for the bottom. So here we have the bottom. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw all the forces in, be consistent here. Okay, we have Fg points down. Excuse me, Fg, all well, the force of gravity, we call that Mg. You're not falling through the seat. So we call that up is going to be our normal force. And we're going to have our acceleration. So we're going to designate, in this case, we're, well, not in this case, but because we're moving and we're at the bottom here, our acceleration points up towards the center. So that's our acceleration points in that direction. And in this case, um, the acceleration points upwards, so we're going to call up the positive direction. Okay, You'll notice up here we call down the positive direction. That's OK. This is really one problem. This is really a separate problem. We're going to designate up in the positive direction for this problem. As long as we're consistent with our designation of our positive and negative, that is fine. Okay. If you want to call down negative, that works also. Just be consistent with your vectors. Okay, so now we have up is the positive direction, which means we have a positive Fn. Fn points in the positive direction. Put that first. Mg points in the negative direction. So we put negative Mg, and then once again, our acceleration is up, but we set up as positive, so we're going to call that Ma. Positive Ma, so to speak. And then we have Fn is going to be equal to in this case, mg plus ma. All right, I'm going to do one more factor like we did above. I'm going to say that fn, I'm going to factor m out, is going to be equal to g plus a. Okay, so you can see that the normal force, which is basically our, our apparent weight again when we're on the Ferris wheel, our normal force is going to be equal to m times g plus a. So our apparent weight is going to be greater. Here we have our true weight, where we're at the top. If we're sitting on the scale, the scale would be less than our true weight. And we're at the bottom, we have another apparent weight, and it's going to be reading greater than our true weight. Okay, so we, uh, we did that, the normal force for those three locations. We were consistent. We drew all the forces. We drew the acceleration in. We showed which way it was positive, And we tried to be consistent when we drew everything in and summed everything up, and I think that worked out pretty well. So uh, hopefully that was helpful, and um, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.